Okay, so you're trying to get up to speed quickly on the AI infrastructure arms race, the one where, you know, billions are flying around before anyone even runs code. Well, you've landed in the right spot. We just saw this huge strategic deal, Anthropic and Google Cloud. It could seriously reshape the whole silicon landscape. Okay, let's unpack this. So this isn't just like a standard cloud contract. It feels much bigger. It's signaling something fundamental about what future AI systems might look like, doesn't it? Our mission today is to really dig into the source material and show you the three big shifts this deal kicks off. Everything from supply chain worries to that GPU versus ASIC fight. Yeah, it's fascinating because this deal, it's a massive validation for custom chips, right? For years, Google's TPUs, their tensor processing units, they were mostly seen as, well, an internal thing, saving costs for search and their other big services. Yeah. But now, this agreement and sources are saying, you know, tens of billions possibly. It forces everyone to see the TPU as a real commercial product. And crucially, it ramps up the competition yeah. big time between yeah. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. The scale, though, that's what jumps out immediately. Anthropic gets access to potentially one million Google TPUs. That's the number floating around, one million. And mostly the seventh gen chip, codenamed Ironwood. A million accelerators. I mean, the infrastructure planning for that alone must be immense. Exactly. And think about the power. Right. Translate that into power and capacity. Mm. The numbers are just... Uh, dizzying. You said well over a gigawatt of AI compute. That's the figure. Well over a gigawatt. Okay, put that in perspective for us. A gigawatt is enough power for? Roughly 350,000 U.S. homes, yeah. something like that. And building a data center, just the building and cooling and power infrastructure for one gigawatt of AI, yeah. that could run you about $50 billion. $50 billion. Wow, that's, that's nation state level spending almost. It is. And this isn't for like next month. This capacity, it's planned to come online in 2026. 2026. Okay. So that long time frame suggests they're not just thinking about cloud 3.5. They're planning for much, much bigger models down the road. Absolutely. This is about securing the compute they'll need to stay competitive, to train those huge next generation models. Mm -hmm. It solidifies their position against, you know, the other big players. And from Google's side, this is a huge win, a strategic coup, really. How so? Well, like I said, the TPU is mostly internal. This deal basically transforms it. It's now a market-facing, revenue-generating beast. It makes Google Cloud Platform GCP stand out. They can offer something genuinely different, performance-optimized, that AWS and Azure maybe can't match directly. Okay, so Google gets validation. Makes sense. What about Anthropic? I mean, their growth has been explosive, right? Something like a $7 billion annual revenue run rate? Meteoric is the word, yeah. Approaching $7 billion. Yeah. And that kind of growth just eats compute. It's the fundamental bottleneck. So they just need the power. They need the power, yes, for survival. Hmm. But it's more than that. It's about the cost. They specifically said they chose TPUs for price performance and efficiency. Ah, okay. So they're signaling that for their specific needs, these custom chips offer a better... Total cost of ownership, TCO. Yeah. Better than the alternatives. Precisely. It means savings. Big savings they can then plow back into research, into hiring top talent. It's a smart economic move, too. Okay, that brings us neatly to their bigger picture strategy, because it's not just about Google, is it? This whole multi-vendor thing they're doing. Right, that's key. They're deliberately building on three legs. Google DPUs, Amazon's Tranium chips, and of course, NVIDIA GPUs. Here's where it gets really interesting for you listening. This isn't just, you know, hedging bets slightly. It feels like a foundational strategy. De-risking everything, avoiding being locked into one vendor. Exactly. If you connect the dots, this multi-platform approach is the direct answer to the supply chain reality we all saw recently. Relying on one supplier, especially one like NVIDIA with, what, 80, 90% market share? That's a huge risk, geopolitically, economically. So by building expertise across three competing platforms, Anthropic gets real leverage. They can negotiate better prices, better terms. They're essentially forcing competition for their business. That sounds good on paper, that strategic flexibility. Sure. But isn't that incredibly complex? I mean, you're building this uh, sort of Frankenstein's monster of compute. Are they sure they have the engineering chops to manage three totally different hardware and software stacks, especially when the clock's ticking against competitors? That is the big question mark. It's the critical risk. Yeah. And honestly, it's unproven at this kind of scale. Orchestrating workloads, scheduling, optimizing across three architectures, it's a monumental operational challenge. Right. Just look at their Amazon partnership. Amazon is still their primary training partner. That's through this huge initiative called Project Rainier. Rainier, okay. Backed by an $8 billion commitment from Amazon, using hundreds of thousands of Amazon's Tranium 2 chips. 
and the goal is to link clusters across multiple physical buildings into one giant supercomputer. Wow, across buildings. Yeah, it's an unprecedented engineering lift. And its success is vital for Amazon too, right? They need to prove Trainium can handle these frontier LLMs. So huge bet on TPUs for efficiency, Trainium for primary training. Where does NVIDIA fit in this picture then? Are they trying to phase out the market leader? No, not entirely. They can't. They still need NVIDIA GPUs where flexibility is really key. Because of CUD. Exactly. NVIDIA's strength isn't just the silicon. It's the CUDA software ecosystem. It's the standard. Pretty much every AI researcher uses it. So for novel research, for quick prototyping, for tasks where you need that versatility, CUDA is still essential. And there might be another layer here too. Anthropic CEO Dario Amode, he's been quite vocal about, well, concerns that kind of lean towards wanting a more decentralized AI ecosystem. That thinking maybe doesn't perfectly align with the more closed proprietary model you see in high-end silicon right now. Interesting. So part of this diversification might even be philosophical. Yeah. Pushing for alternatives. It, it suggests they're actively trying to engineer a future with more options. Yeah. Less reliance on monopolies. Okay, let's dive into the tech specs a bit, because this GPU versus ASIC battle is where, like you said, the real cost savings happen. Or remind us of the basic difference again. Sure. So GPUs think NVIDIA H100, their general purpose, versatile. They can do lots of things reasonably well. ASIC's application-specific integrated circuits, like Google's TPU or Amazon's Trainium, they're built for one job, basically. Mm -hmm. Tensor processing, the math behind AI, and they do it incredibly well. And the performance numbers show that. Oh, yeah. Look at Google's TPU V4 versus NVIDIA's A100, which was the comparable chip at the time. Hmm. The TPU V4 could hit up to, say, 275 TFLOPS on certain calculations. The A100 was around 156 TFLOPS. All right, TFLOPS. Just break that down quickly. What's a TFLOP and why is it the key metric here? All right, so TFLOPS is trillion floating point operations per second. It's just a measure of raw calculation speed for the kind of math AI needs. More TFLOPS means faster training, basically. Got it. Faster is better. Faster is better, but the real kicker, the thing that really validates Anthropic's choice here, isn't just speed, it's efficiency, power efficiency. ASICs generally offer something like two to three times better performance per watt compared to GPUs. Two to three times. Mm -hmm. Now think back to that potential $50 billion data center cost. That 2 3x power saving, it translates directly into huge operational savings on electricity and cooling over the life of the chips. At the gigawatt scale we're talking about, that's hundreds of millions, maybe billions saved. Okay, that efficiency point leads right into this TCO debate, the total cost of ownership argument. Exactly. So on one side, you have NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang. His argument is basically our GPUs are so powerful, they finish the job faster. That speed gets your AI model earning revenue quicker. So even if the chip costs more upfront, the overall TCO is lower because you make money sooner. Makes sense. Time is money. Right. But then you have the hyperscalers, Google and Amazon, pushing back with their ASICs. And Anthropic's deal kind of backs them up. The argument is true TCO advantage comes from controlling the whole stack. Chip design, networking, the cloud service itself. Optimizing all of it gives you maximum power efficiency and lower operating costs, especially for these standardized, massive-scale training jobs. Interesting tension there. Meanwhile, the whole AI chip market is just exploding, isn't it? What are the projections? Yeah, it's wild. From maybe $34 billion in 2025 to potentially nearly $220 billion by 2032. Wow. And right now, NVIDIA dominates, like we said, 80, maybe even over 90% market share. Custom ASIC, they're tiny by comparison, maybe 3 4% today. So where's the potential shift? If ASICs are so efficient, why aren't they bigger already? Well, the potential tipping point, many believe, lies in the shift from training to inference. Explain that distinction again. Sure. Training is the huge upfront job of building the AI model. Yeah. It takes massive compute, costs a lot. Inference is using the trained model in the real world. Every time you ask Claude a question or use a translation app, that's inference. It happens constantly, high volume. Okay. And ASICs, especially chips designed specifically for inference like Amazon's Inferentia, they are incredibly good at that. Video. Super power efficient, lower cost per query for those repetitive high volume tasks. So as the world uses AI more and more shifting towards inference-heavy workloads, these specialized ASICs are perfectly placed to grab a much bigger slice of that $220 billion pie. All right, so pulling all these threads together, how does this Anthropic deal actually change the game for the big players? What's the strategic impact? Okay, let's break it down. For Google, Alphabet, this deal is massive validation. It justifies those colossal investments they're making in future TPUs, like the next-gen Trillium. 
It basically turns the TPU from an internal project into a serious commercial weapon, pulling valuable AI workloads onto GCP away from competitors. Makes sense. What about NVIDIA? This sounds like a direct threat. For NVIDIA, yeah, this rise of credible, large-scale ASIC alternatives from companies with very deep pockets. Mm. That's the biggest long-term challenge to their high-margin dominance. They're not standing still, though. They're fighting back by strategically opening up parts of their platform. Like what? Well, for instance, sharing elements of their NVLink interconnect technology. That's the super-fast fabric linking GPUs together. It's a move to ensure that even if other chips are in the data center, NVIDIA's networking might still be the essential glue holding it all together, keeping them central. Smart Defense and Amazon, AWS. For Amazon, AWS, the pressure is on. Project Rainier has to succeed now. They absolutely need to prove that Tranium can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with TPUs and NVIDIA's best to keep their crown as the go-to cloud for cutting-edge AI. It's become a strategic necessity for them. And lastly, AMD. Where do they fit? AMD is actually a big winner here, yeah. indirectly. This whole industry push for diversification, needing alternatives to NVIDIA, that's a huge tailwind for AMD. They become the obvious, credible second source for high-performance GPUs. And we're seeing that hay off already, right? Big wins with Oracle, with OpenAI. Yeah. Customers see them as a vital counterweight in the market. Okay. So... What does this all mean when we boil it down? I don't think it means one player totally displaces another. The most likely future, I think, is one of coexistence and specialization. Okay. GPUs, like NVIDIA's, will probably keep their top spot for flexible R&D, where you need that CU day versatility for new ideas. Mm. But for optimized, huge-scale tasks, mm. customer A6 TPUs, training them for training, chips like Inferentia for inference, they're going to carve out a bigger and bigger share purely based on efficiency and that total cost of ownership. Got it. So the key takeaway for you listening is this. Anthropic's massive bet on custom silicon basically signals the end of an era, that time of single vendor loyalty in AI hardware. It's over. We're in a complex multipolar world now, and it's forcing everyone to push their tech roadmaps faster. And that leads to maybe one last thought for you to chew on. Yeah. The real battleground might be shifting. It's becoming less about just the raw speed of one chip and more about the total system. Specifically, that high-speed networking fabric and the software that ties thousands, even hundreds of thousands, of these chips together into one giant brain. Think about that networking piece, the actual connections. What role will that critical component play in deciding who really wins the AI compute race next? That might be the next frontier.